as we barrel headfirst into the summer, we're entering into something of a traditionally quiet period in the automotive world. Most press launches for model year cars that are going to launch this year have already happened. Automakers are readying themselves for the start of the autumn auto show season. And as people prepare for the traditional Northern Hemisphere summer holiday season, which depending on where you are in the world can happen anywhere from late June to late August, we find ourselves in slow newsland, where we see a whole load of fluff pieces surface just to keep readers and viewers entertained. And yes, we've been guilty of it too from time to time. But today we got some great diversion from those summer doldrums in the form of not one, but two electric car news events that are well worth our time. And they're from two companies that enjoyed a 17 year long partnership between 1977 and 1994, Volvo and Renault. And while neither firm has anything to do with each other these days, I did find it funny that they both ended up holding an EV event on the same day. Anyway, tomorrow I'll go over what we learned from Renault's eways event, but today I'm going to take a deep dive into Volvo's multi-hour presentation called Volvo Tech Moment 2021. In it, we learned a bunch of new stuff about Volvo's plans for a fully electric lineup by 2030, learned about Volvo's goals when it comes to autonomous and connected vehicles, and we learned how it plans to transition, like so many other automakers, to in-house battery development and software design, structural battery pack design, and flexible voltage platforms. But before we get there, a side note, because I know someone will ask, Several news outlets have been breathlessly talking up news of Tesla's Model 2 in the last few days, posting what amounts to fluff pieces that offer little to no additional information other than broad speculation over what we learned during Battery Day last September. As of filming today, Tesla has not released any new information about its planned, lower cost, probably hatchback car, which many have theorized will be called the Tesla Model 2 though even that hasn't yet been made official. And that means, as you might expect, we are not covering it here until we have something concrete from Tesla, or of course, Elon Musk. Back to Volvo. Taking place online, the four plus hour event, more with additional Q&A sessions that we've not even finished watching yet, laid out Volvo's roadmap for the next decade, covering its plans to transition its entire fleet to electric vehicles by 2030. At the core of the presentation was Volvo's usual goals, producing safe, high-end, premium cars that the company says will be the safest cars it's ever made, leveraging technology, quote, not for the sake of technology itself, but for the sake of our purpose and our customers. It highlighted partnerships with technology companies and partners around the world, including Google, Nvidia, and Northvolt, as well as an expansion of its existing in-house development. Talking in the introduction, Volvo CEO Hawken Samuelson admitted that Volvo's plans are a little behind schedule, a delay he blamed primarily on COVID-19, but confirmed that Volvo is on track to reach its goal of 800,000 annual sales per year, a goal it set itself about 10 years ago. Quote, we need to transform this company from just a premium conventional company, he said. Continuing, quote, we need to transform it into a leader of the premium electric segment, which is growing very fast. In order to reach its 2030 goal of being 100% battery electric, Hawken acknowledged that Volvo needs to delve deeper into the supply chain in order to secure the batteries it needs. And that means the brand has not only to bring battery production in-house, but also expand its software development, building a centralized computer system that he said was almost as big a deal for the auto industry as going electric. The multi-hour presentation was split up into segments covering each aspect of Volvo's future plans, interspersed with question and answer sessions. And unlike many events from major automakers, which heavily rely on a lot of flashy stagecraft and virtual reality, Volvo's event felt more like a fireside chat with the executives and engineers charged with making all of this change happen than anything else. I'll admit, it's very Volvo, and it reinforces one of the reasons that I'm very fond of the way the brand communicates. Less flashiness, much more substance. 
Obviously, I can't concentrate many hours of videos into 15 to 20 minutes, so if you want all the details, it is worth going to watch the presentations for yourself. But here are the most important parts as far as electric and autonomous vehicle development goes. First, batteries. As it announced last week, Volvo has already inked an agreement to work closely with Northvolt on a 50-50 owned joint venture to develop and manufacture a next generation of lithium iron and solid state packs that will not only provide Volvo with upwards of 50 gigawatt hours of cell capacity per year, but also increase energy density and lower cost. Volvo says it's working with Northvolt on new chemistries today that will increase the energy density of lithium ion cells by up to 50%, leveraging improvements in cathode and anode designs and pushing towards cell chemistries with cathodes that are made with more nickel and less cobalt and anodes with added silicon. This, says Volvo, lays out a path to achieving an energy density of 700 watt-hours per litre, which we seem to recall is similar to that achieved by Tesla's 4680 form factor cells. Moving beyond that, Volvo says it's confident that pure lithium anodes and new electrolytes will allow it to progress to pure solid-state batteries. These are cell chemistries that it believes will reach an energy density of 1,000 watt-hours per litre, which would allow a real-world range in excess of 1,000 kilometres, 621 miles per charge. Volvo says its third generation of batteries, due by mid-decade, will be made with a new structural design that will use aluminium cans to house cell modules in bricks that will then be integrated with a top and bottom plate to form a structural component within each car's floor. This is just like the structural battery packs we've seen promoted by Tesla, Volkswagen, Ford and GM at their various technology and investor days in the last 12 months or so. Interestingly though, while Volvo is focusing on developing its own in-house production, it acknowledges that to get to the 70 gigawatt hours it needs to achieve its battery electric production goals by mid-decade, it will need to continue to buy battery cells from battery partners, including Northvolt, as well as making its own at its upcoming Gigafactory. Again, this isn't exactly new. It's exactly the same as Tesla does with its battery supply chain. It produces some battery cells in-house and then buys someone in from external sources. And as a side, the animations that Volvo used to showcase its third generation structural cell were very cool and alludes to the modularity of its future battery packs with a one size fits all Airfix kit style. I would actually totally buy an Airfix kit that let me make a model battery pack. I know, I'm a nerd. When it comes to charging, Volvo's second generation battery packs, due to hit the market in the next year or so, will benefit from reduced cell internal resistances, halving the 20 to 80 percent charge time and quote, exceeding 200 kilowatts of charging capabilities. Volvo hinted that its third generation battery packs will feature the same kind of flexible voltage systems found in the Porsche Taycan, Hyundai Ioniq 5 and other high power charging EVs, allowing the battery pack to switch from 400 volt parallel pack operation when charging at legacy CCS sites or using the car, but then switch to 800 volt series pack arrangements for super fast next generation CCS rapid charging. That rapid charging is of course an important factor for new EV owners, but another big selling point that Volvo has committed to is two-way power transfer, which Volvo says all of its future EVs will offer. Unlike the Hyundai Kia vehicle-to-load system, which provides two-way power transfers at lower power rates, Volvo seems to be heading in the same direction as Ford, with full home power backup promised for future models. Eventually, the company says, similar to Ford, that it wants to offer customers the ability to charge their cars from the grid or renewable sources of energy at home when the cost of electricity is low, and then use that power to save money and grid strain during peak demand periods. Given how uncertain grid power is becoming in some parts of the world due to extreme weather events and poor planning, I think this is going to be a great selling point for Volvo and it sets apart the brand from some other luxury brands who have yet to get on board with vehicle to grid. Volvo was also keen to emphasize that balancing grid demand and providing energy storage are features of EVs that will speed the transition to renewable energy generation. And we have to agree.
to software. Volvo says it plans on building its own in-house operating system for future vehicles, but says it will use partnerships with both Google and Nvidia to help it develop next generation vehicle hardware and software. According to Volvo, keeping development in-house means that it can respond more rapidly to issues that develop with its fleet, as well as using anonymized monitoring from customers' cars to better design and adapt and push improvements to cars' ranges, efficiencies, charging speeds, battery pack management, and being Volvo, autonomous and driver assistance safety features. This would all be over-the-air software updates to keep cars current, secure, and competitive. The Volvo says part of the drive to in-house software development allows it to eliminate some of the bottlenecks that currently exist in its current system architectures. While cars are capable of over-the-air updates today, Volvo says it wastes a lot of time dealing with integration between cars in-car software and proprietary firmware from parts, the ECUs, that it gets from tier one part suppliers, something that also slows down its over-the-air software update process when there's a bug that needs fixing. Instead, it's looking to develop a central computer system for its future vehicles in much the same way that Tesla has developed its computer networking system for its cars. Volvo says we won't see that system debut until 2022, and it plans on installing two core systems in each car for full redundancy. Instead of taking two years to develop software improvements and integrations, which it says is the norm for today's tier one part suppliers and their proprietary software, Volvo says improvements can take a matter of months. Interestingly too, there's definitely a plan for Volvo to take a leaf out of Tesla's book, rolling out incremental improvements to software as and when they're ready. Additionally, this kind of when it's ready development, along with centralized computer designs that are capable of dealing with raw data directly from sensors on the vehicle, means that Volvo can more easily upgrade its computer hardware over time, rather than have to deal with the current additional development model, where components have to be locked in for the entire production of the vehicle. In terms of in-car infotainment, Volvo says it's continuing its work with Google to extend its in-car infotainment experience, focusing on safety, simplicity, and ease of use for customers, while also integrating head-up displays and fully customizable dashboards and touchscreen displays. While the infotainment system will operate independently of Volvo's in-car central computer system, the two systems will operate in a complementary manner to each other. Which brings us to autonomous vehicle capabilities. Volvo says its core computer system, built around NVIDIA's systems on chips, will be capable of carrying out autonomous vehicle tasks. But while some automakers are focusing on fully autonomous vehicle functionality and have marketing campaigns that really focus on the notion of these cars driving themselves, Volvo is casting its autonomous vehicle capabilities as being advanced driver assistance features rather than driver replacements. One of the concerns specifically addressed was the lack of clarity in some areas about what is an autonomous driving feature and what is driver assistance, and very clearly stating it does not sign on to the SAE levels of autonomy. Instead, Volvo described three driving modes, with the near fully autonomous ride mode being unsupervised. But although in ride mode the driver does not technically need to pay attention and could be doing other things, Volvo suggested reading, for example. The company also stated that, quote, there will be a point in time where you will have to take over and the driver should, for example, not be asleep. Although, to be clear, Volvo reiterated there will be time for this transition to occur, with the car performing a safe handover back to the driver. Given some of the challenges that Tesla and others have faced with the branding of their semi-autonomous driver assistance systems, this is not only a smart move on Volvo's part, but kind of fits in rather nicely with the brand's tendency to not overpromise on technology, but rather focus on designing systems that are technically proficient for what they were designed to do. Finally, we got a chance to see a new concept car from Volvo, a vehicle it's calling the Concept Recharge. Like most concept cars, details are pretty sparse, but the design reminds me a little of a cross between Volvo's current SUV lineup, mixed with a 240 and a throwback to the Volvo 480 of the 1980s, at least from the front. Like many clean page designs, it has no B pillar, with front and rear doors opening in opposite directions. And there's a plethora of the now standard eco-friendly materials inside. Will it make it to production? 
I doubt it. And I'd put this concept car into the concept car bin rather than the we'll call this a concept car but we're actually going to make it bin. As for the rest of Volvo's presentation, there's nothing truly revolutionary there, but it does put Volvo on a smart path towards a better future for the brand and its customers. I've no doubt that SUVs will feature heavily in the Volvo of the future, but having driven the XC90 plug-in hybrid recently and enjoyed its premium feel, excellent build quality and driving style, I cannot wait to see what Volvo's next generation EVs will be like. How about you? That's it for today. Please do hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't yet, as it should make sure that you don't miss out on our videos. And please do the same to our other two channels, Transport Evolved Take Two, and if you're in a hurry, Transport Evolved Shorts. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, that's Andrew Martin, Guido Drahoa, Brophy Wolf, Anonymous Freak, Regine Fellows, Carl Hodgson, Gordon C, Paul Conway, Laura Sanborn, Anthony Coates, Denny Hyde, Sean Ueda, and Tazla in the Gong, and our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, John Lyons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, and Ian. If you'd like to join the ranks of wonderful supporters, you'll find links below to Patreon, Bitcoin, and Kofi. You can chat with the team and TE fans over at Discord. And frankly, we're getting very close to our 1,000th Patreon supporter and have some pretty cool ideas for how to celebrate. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving!